Before we begin, the usual stuff. If you enjoy my content and you want to keep being notified when I post it, YouTube might not favor me for much longer, or they might not have already. Who knows? So go ahead and subscribe so that you, you know, are notified when I post stuff. Yeah, you hear that guy who's completely dead inside? He was ahead of his time. You should listen to that guy. Welcome to today's video and the dark age of the Eclipse channel. That's right. Reaction content. What am I doing with my life? Today, I'll be reacting to my own video, mostly because a lot of you guys brought it up in the Daily Dose of Stupid that I made about myself, and they said, Eclipse, you gotta have this one in your next Daily Dose of Stupid, and it was such a gold mine that I figured, why bother put it there, it'll take up the whole video. Might as well just make an entire video about it. So, today we're gonna be taking a look at Star Platinum, towing the line between balanced and OP. And uh, we'll see if anything that I said a year ago holds up at all today, but honestly, not holding my breath. <laughs> I just, I'm not expecting much. Star Platinum in general is just good. And I feel like that metric doesn't really apply to a lot of the stands in YBA. You either have a stand that's incredibly busted overpowered or it's garbage and the kind of good in between seemingly doesn't really apply to too many stands. It's not that it doesn't exist at all, it's just rare. Right, so we're actually off to a pretty good start here, I won't lie, because this much back in the day was true. And if you saw this video today, or if this is your first time seeing this video and you weren't around back when I made this, you'll probably be a little bit confused because nowadays you can pick up just about anything and you could probably do all right and everything's got a halfway decent move set with some usable moves. And for the most part, as long as you play your cards right, you can do well with just about anything. But back in the day, not so much. You really only had a choice between something that was ludicrously broken or complete garbage. And there really wasn't much in between there and Star Platinum kind of fell in that in-between spot because it wasn't quite as broken as like King Crimson or the World AU, but it also wasn't complete garbage like some of the other stands in the game, Silver Chariot, I don't know, stuff like that. When it comes to strategies for Star Platinum, I don't think it comes as a surprise to anyone that your game plan revolves basically entirely around Starfinger and Inhale. These two moves are incredibly good and carry this stand hardcore. The fact that Starfinger and Inhale directly combo into each other is incredibly strong because while you're inhaling people, you can click them, which does an absurd amount of damage, especially if you have rage mode active during it. And this is where things start to fall apart. Star Platinum's game plan is to use, or I suppose was to use two moves that both combo extend and combo extend into each other. Something that just about no other stand in the game has. And there's very good reason that just about no other stand in the game has that, um, and that's because when you give a stand something that has two combo extenders that extend into each other that for all intents and purposes are not hard to land and have next to no punish window to actually punish people for just throwing them out. One of those moves having literally zero punish window and being completely free, looking at you inhale, uh, then we start to get into the stun simulator territory. And that's not a good look. Since Inhale has a relatively long cooldown though, sometimes you'll be landing star fingers and then not knowing exactly what to do with the stun. Excuse me, what? Just, just literally push a button. Literally push any button. Was I on drugs when I made this video? Uh, okay, correct me if I'm wrong, but as far as I know, Starfinger confirms into literally anything. Like, any move that you can get on Star Platinum, or you can get with a spec that you can use with Star Platinum, confirms with, with Starfinger. Literally all of them. So, what do you mean sometimes when inhales off cooldown, or on cooldown, you don't know what to press? You don't know what but Any of them. Literally anything. You can, you could just <laughs> smash your keyboard and you've, congratulations, you've punished. Good job. I don't, I don't, I don't know. 
The thing about Star Platinum is that it's a very, very unga bunga run in there and press a bunch of buttons to get damage. And so it heavily encourages you to just hold forward and press buttons. But unfortunately, a lot of the time, this can just get you killed. As the current meta of YBA is not unga bunga hold forward, it's run away and chuck projectiles. You know what? This is another one that's pretty true for the time period. And people that weren't around back then are probably not really going to get this or they're just gonna be confused, or they're not going to be able to comprehend the way things were back then because of how the way things are now. For all intents and purposes, you could do the same kind of gameplay style that's played today, back when I made this video, but nobody was really doing that because it just wasn't popularized as a strategy yet. So people just, people just didn't. It's the way it was. Basically, the main thing that I'm referring to is uh, the World AU. Because uh, the World AU back then, oh boy, it was it was broken. It was a horror story. Uh, and I'll, I'll tell you about it right now. The World AU, when this video was made, had uncancelable, unblockable knives with a lower cooldown than they have today. Which is probably pretty hard to believe, but it's true. So in other words, if they pressed their knife key and you were far away, you just had to accept it and try to dodge out of the way. And if they were up close, you just got hit. That's it, you got hit. Like, what are you supposed to do? You can't cancel it and you can't really get out of the way because you're right on top of them. So uh, you take damage, is what it is. They could do this constantly on top of having a chop, which is basically Starfinger with less range and having smoke grenade, which they could use to zone you out whenever they felt like it and hit you on the ground, but not very many people did that back then. Now people do it all the time, obviously. And time skip, which is the best movement tool in the game, undisputed, I think. And a rage bar, which makes it so that when you're just playing the game, suddenly you can press a key on your keyboard and you do more damage and take less damage. You're just winning because you were playing. I don't know, you just can. Uh, and you get at a time stop. So, like just absolutely colossally broken. And so when you take something like that and you compare it to something like Star Platinum at the time, maybe you can start to see why I thought that Star Platinum was more balanced or at least pretty balanced because uh, that wasn't. Now we get onto the topic of the Rage Bar, which is one of Star Platinum's best tools hands down. Star Platinum's Rage Bar is incredibly powerful. People heavily, heavily, heavily underrate how strong Star Platinum's Rage Bar is. Combined with Haman defense and your Rage Active, you take very little damage while dishing out tons of it. And now we can talk about Rage, because I think Rage is an awful mechanic and a serious oversight as a whole in the game. And I don't know why it interacts the way it does, but hey, let's talk about it. Why not? Rage is a mechanic that rewards you for playing the game. That's that's it. You just play, you attack, you take damage, and then you can press a key on your keyboard and uh, you have an objective advantage over the enemy. You do more damage, you take less damage. Just because. Now I get it. They wanted Rage to be in there so that you couldn't just time stop at will. But I would almost make the argument that being able to time stop at will would be less broken than being able to just start winning the game by pushing a button. Uh, I mean, you've got win button number one or win button number two, and which is the uh, lesser of two evils? Well, instead, you've got both win buttons anyway, because by playing the game, you fill up a bar and you can press your win button to get less damage taken and more damage uh, dealt out. And then you can press the other win button to time stop at the end of it anyway. So, I don't know, it's just really odd to me, and always will, that stands like the world that you and the world needed the rage bar because time stop, but stands like King Crimson with Diablo being like angry man himself, don't get angry at all. They don't get a rage, they don't deserve it because they don't have a time stop. <laughs> like, I'm not saying King Crimson should have had or should have rage, it shouldn't, but like rage as a whole is just, it's really whack when you consider that some stands that just have far worse kits don't get a an extra win button, basically. Time skip dash Starfinger is really, really good unless you're going up against somebody that's actually competent at the game. 
Thankfully, YBA, for the most part, you will not be playing against people who are all that competent. So 99% of the time, you can get away with time skip dash Starfinger and net yourself easy stuns, combos, and kills. And here's the thing that basically shaped this entire review, and I ask that you seek to understand in this scenario. Because the reality of the day is most people playing back then, and probably most people now too, uh, they suck. <laughs> They're terrible. I don't know what else to tell you. And because most people suck and they're terrible, it makes trying to figure out what things are good and what aren't without using them extensively by yourself kind of hard. And if you look at the gameplay in the background, if you go back and watch this whole video through, you can see that I suck. This is terrible gameplay. It's awful. I have inhale ready to go pretty often and I just don't use it. I try to go for extra damage on Starfinger combos and then I just drop it, don't get anything and get punished for landing a move because I'm an idiot. And the reality is most of that gameplay that you're seeing, that's how people played this back then. Like that's that's the way it was. So because that's the way it was, it was hard to see how oppressive some of the moves could have been because you just don't really run into that many people that are actually that good. And so when you were like me back then, uploading videos like every day, streaming like every day, you didn't really have time to go through and think really hard about how to lab out the best star platinum combos and just how stupid the moveset really was. You just looked at what other people did and looked like what you could do and you were like, well, I mean, it doesn't seem that bad. I don't know what people are all upset about. So this video is going to come out and I think there are going to be a lot of people that are disappointed on my take on it. Just can't imagine why. Because every single person practically anywhere that suggested this to me has been like, complain about how Star Platinum's broken. Star Platinum, it's so overpowered. They really need to nerf Star Platinum. And frankly, I'm not one of those people. I meme around with my friends a lot and affectionately call Star Platinum Sweat Platinum because anyone still hanging on to this stand didn't get Star Platinum the world. And as funny of a joke as that is, I really don't think that this stand is quote unquote overpowered. It's just not. That's the argument, by the way. The, uh, the number one argument in this video about why Star Platinum is balanced and not OP like everyone said it was is because um, it's just not. Trust me, bro. Just take my word for it. It's not. I mentioned some other stuff later, but uh, yeah, that's the, that's the biggest one. Uh, trust me, bro. Not OP. The interesting thing about Star Platinum is that I feel almost like it's a baseline for how all the stands in the game should be. Here's the deal. Star Platinum is one of the only, if not the only stand in the entire game that has a bread and butter combo, which I'll be referring to as a BNB from here on, that doesn't require you to have any sort of spec. Basically, Star Platinum feels like an actual fighting game character as a stand. And here is a problem. Hey Matt, how's that super cool traditional JoJo fighting game doing right now? Interesting. Very interesting. It's almost as if traditional 2D fighters are just really not that popular. And it's also almost like having a unique game concept and unique fighting mechanics that are different from the status quo is a good thing. Rather than, you know, this. You know another game that had BNBs and acted more like a traditional fighting game? Uh, this game. Yeesh. If you want, you could see exactly what would have happened if they'd taken my advice back then, which was bad advice. Uh, and the easy way to do that is to go take a look at my favorite game, A Universal Time, which currently is rewriting its entire game from the ground up again. <laughs> because as it turns out, most people don't like being in a 20 year long combo string where if they make one mistake, they just die outright or lose half their health. And I think it's pretty clear that the people looking for the hardcore fighting game, yada, 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 are in the, uh, they're in the pretty strong minority here. But the fact that Star Platinum can be used without a spec makes it unique to a lot of the other stands in the game. And frankly, that's not a good thing. That's actually one of the biggest problems I have with YBA is the fact that specs are so heavily required on almost everything. I think every stand should be able to be played on at least a somewhat competent level without having the need for specs. This one I'm torn on, 
and I think I always will be because specs in YBA especially because of the inherent damage resistance that some of them give you I think have always been really flawed um, and I didn't really pick up on any of that until I quit and was looking in after I was done and I've thought about it and I've been like man you know that doesn't really doesn't really make sense and just kind of causes a, a balance disaster. When you have a spec versus specless player in YBA, you get to see how important damage reduction really is because that specless player is just at a almost unwinnable, if not arguably completely unwinnable disadvantage if the both players are of equal skill and using the same stand because one player just has to hit the other player less times. Like that's that's literally it. Because of the damage reduction, they just have to hit them less times. It's like if you had Rage Mode active all the time, which is a, a bit of nonsense, if I'm going to be honest. It also makes it so that specs that don't have the inherent damage reduction or have limitations on their damage reduction are just, again, at a disadvantage or just flat out a suicide run. Because no matter how many moves you add and no matter how good you make the move set, when someone just has to hit you with less standard attacks than, they, than you have to hit them with, it, it doesn't work out. It just doesn't. That's another thing that makes Star Platinum Balance that I think a lot of people don't consider. Why does nobody block Starfinger? Starfinger's got a pretty considerable amount of end lag on it, and if you block it, you can combo them for it. Despite this, seemingly nobody actually blocks this move, and I don't understand for the life of me why. It seems like a no-brainer. If you don't want to get stunned, block. But nope, people just get hit by this, consistently, over and over again. I'll never understand. So the first thing that was touched on here is about the fact that nobody blocks Starfinger, and that was true then, and it's still true now, where people just, they just don't block it. Um, but in terms of inhale, I don't talk about it too much, and actually looking back on the footage, I kind of forgive myself for not talking it that much, because, uh... <laughs> Because it's, it's broken. It doesn't work. <laughs> you can see it in the actual clip that I was talking over right before I started talking now. I'll, I'll throw it up on the screen. But um, lots of people probably joined after Star Platinum's inhale was made significantly more consistent. But what you might not know is that before that, it wasn't consistent at all. You can see in this clip that I'm inhaling somebody and they're getting inhaled and then they just block. They just choose to block, they just can. And this is gonna confuse people that are new because they're gonna be like, Eclipse, you can always block in, in inhale, what are you talking about? Uh, that's because you couldn't before. If you weren't around, you couldn't before. If you got inhaled, you couldn't do anything. It was just a standard stunt. No blocking, nothing. Um, but here, like, he's getting inhaled and then he just blocks and he's like, nope, you can't do it. And it doesn't make inhale any less incredibly stupid because when it did work, it was just as broken, like, <laughs> no way around it. It was like a four second stun where you could do anything that had no startup and no way to punish it. No end lag, nothing. It was just free. You throw it out and you get damage or maybe you don't. But regardless, you don't lose for using it no matter what, you can't. So, I mean, it was still broken, but it, it, it was broken in two ways. It's broken OP and it, and it also, it also didn't, it didn't work. So you know what? That's a wrap. I went on to talk about some rambling about fighting games and some other crap, uh, and it's not important. But honestly, going back through this, as outdated as this video is, and it, it definitely is, uh, and in the current landscape, doesn't hold up at all. But looking back at it from the lens of back in the day and when I made it, I honestly don't feel that bad about it, which is really weird, because I came in thinking that I was going to be like, I'm going to tear myself to shreds, this is going to be an unwatchable video, and everything I say is going to be just horrible, and I actually don't think that's true, necessarily. I think when you get some context in there, some of the stuff I say actually makes a fair amount of sense. A fair amount of it is still horrible, uh, and, and I think I, I did a good job of, of portraying how stupid some of those moments are, but really, when it comes down to it, when you compare Star Platinum to some of the other heavy hitters at the time, it was balanced, because it was in the middle ground. You had garbage on one hand, and complete broken on the other, and then in the middle was Star Platinum. <laughs> so, like, on that sense, it makes sense. When you try to compare Star Platinum to, like, pre-nerfed GER, which 
just got one counter and you died and could get out of any combo and was basically invulnerable and had the whole life beam barrage nonsense. Or pre-nerf King Crimson, which could do the stupid combo where they hit you on the ground with Impale and then they use Chop and you lose 80% of your health. Or pre-nerf the World AU, which I already talked about. Things don't really look as bad as they do now. When you consider the fact that Inhale was half functional at the time and uh, they buffed it a lot to make it the most impressive move in the game, and the fact that, quite honestly, when you compare it to all those stands, it really isn't that good, or it's not as good, certainly not, I don't feel as bad about this. So I'll click bait and I'll say my worst take, but I feel like I probably had a worst take out there, because when this was made, some of it still holds up. Anyways, that is a wrap for today's video. I don't think there's anything else that I had to talk about or wanted to talk about, so we're gonna wrap things up there. Uh, if there's any other videos that I made that are just awful and don't hold up and you think I can make fun of them, feel free to let me know in the comments or send them to me on Discord and I'll take a look. And if it's good enough, then hey, who knows? We could see another one of these videos. As I said at the start, if you made it all the way through this part of the video and you're not already subscribed and have your notifications on and liked the video, commented, all that kind of stuff, I don't normally ask for it and I'm gonna have to change that and normally ask for it because while I need help, <laughs> uh, YouTube isn't happy with me for good reason uh, and you guys need to bail me out. So thank you in advance. Anyways, that's all. So if you enjoyed, have a wonderful day or night wherever you are, and I'll see you guys next time.